Hi, I'm Zainab Badawi. I'm a television presenter and this is See Britain Through My Eyes. I was born in Sudan at the time when the British were in power there. But I moved with my family to London when I was two years old. Sudan got its independence in 1956. My father had been involved in pre-independence politics and he ceased to be in politics and he moved into journalism. But by about 62, 63, um, it was quite difficult for my father to stay in the country. There'd been a military dictatorship a few years earlier. So he came ahead of the family and in fact, he got a job with the BBC Arabic service at Bush House. I think the key thing that we take for granted here in Britain is freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Having reported and worked in many countries abroad, I have seen and witnessed firsthand how uh, there is a much tighter state control of uh, the media. People aren't often given um, a true or balanced or accurate picture of what's actually going on. As we speak, there are people languishing in jail because they dared to speak out. I just stand on the steps there and I do a trail. Obviously, democracy here is, is a, an old, robust one. You can vote a government in, you can vote a government out. And so I suppose my background means that I don't take this liberty for granted. And I believe it is a real cornerstone of democracy. Are we ready? OK. How soon will debt-ridden Greece get the financial rescue package it's demanding? My news programme, World News Today, it's a, an evening programme that goes out in Britain on BBC4 television at 7pm and it goes out on our international channel, BBC World News. We reach something like 250 million households. The outright winner in Sudan's landmark elections, the opposition say it's fraudulent. How will he be our do again? Too long. It's going to be too long. We really try and find stories which affect the global citizen. How will he, the country and the international community respond? That's World News Today with me, Zainab Badawi. Thank you. Thank you. I should have written it and then I would have done it to time, so sorry, I was doing it a bit on the hoof. I know it's cliche to say, but it is true that globalisation means everybody's lives are very interlinked. We saw that with the financial crisis. Aaron, can I just borrow you for a sec? I wanted to ask you about the Greece thing, because I'm going to be leading with that. Okay, this, it's, so it's what have putting you done its on foot it? down at the yeah. moment, but we've just heard from Angela Merkel, who says there is no way that the Eurozone won't come to some type of agreement. I mean, in the old days, we used to say foreign news and domestic news. And now, actually, it, it sounds a bit odd if we say foreign news and British news, because the two live off each other. They're almost one and the same. Tools of the trade. Five minutes there. Transparency, accountability of government actions is absolutely crucial and frankly that's the role of the media. You know, shining a harsh spotlight on truth and um, sunlight after all is a very strong antiseptic, isn't it? Two minutes to air. I'm alright, Ed, yeah, I'm ready to rehearse when you are. This is BBC World News Today with me, Zaina Badawi. Europe bickers over the Greek bailout. A narrow escape for the British ambassador in Yemen. He survives a suicide attack on his convoy. The government blame Al-Qaeda. I'm not sure if people abroad really understand what the BBC is about because I think the fact that the BBC is paid for by the British taxpayer People believe that, therefore, the British government has actually an editorial input into what the BBC actually does. And I think they find it quite hard to understand that the BBC's constitution means that we absolutely, absolutely cherish and protect and fight for our independence. So we don't even have an arm's length relationship with the government. We just don't deal with the government at all. And you can see that you have the authentic pronunciation for Al-Qaeda, because, of course, my family speak Arabic. It's not easy to say even in Arabic. One minute to add. People like Mikhail Gorbachev say, oh, I heard about what was going on in my own country through the BBC, and we know that the Dalai Lama listens to the World Service Radio. It really is a vital, vital tool for the dissemination of information in all sorts of ways. All these things have really served to underscore that freedom of speech that we have in this country. And I suppose the BBC best epitomises that tradition and cue. This is BBC World News Today with me, Zainab Badawi. 
I'm very proud to be an employee of BBC.